All right, so the truth is no dude wants to be called Pam. But the truth is most men have a Pam problem. The Pam problem, guys, you know what that is? It's the passive aggressive man. Passive with his hopes, dreams, desires, maybe aggressive with vices, self-sabotage, distractions. They also struggle with women, work, and the world of men. Pam is passive with women, constantly friend-zoned. He's the nice guy that women keep around to help them move, check on their dogs, but never want to date. Pam is passed up at work, passed up for the promotion, and can't seem to catch a break. If you think you may have a Pam problem, or maybe you know someone that does, check out the High Value Man Conversation on Apple and Spotify and learn how to stop Pam and become a high value man. Learn more about the host, Aaron Alejandrino, on Instagram at The Fit Beard, all one word. But the podcast is called High Value Man Conversation. I checked it out on Apple Podcasts. It already has a five star review. It's got some great episodes, including how to avoid that dreaded friend zone. Those of you guys out there, I'm very familiar with that friend zone over the years. I was lucky enough to finally get out of it, but that is going to be an excellent episode for the, you guys out there that are stuck in that situation. You can also learn how to just make friends. I mean, just basic stuff, but critical, critical stuff as well. Check out the High Value Man Conversation. It's available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You're not going to want to miss it. It'll add value to your life, guaranteed. Check it out today. This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The The one that everybody wants, me. You're gonna acknowledge me. Welcome to the WWE Podcast for this Tuesday, August 16th, 2022. Monday Night Raw took place last night in Washington, D.C. And overall, I thought it was a really good show. I, I did. And it just feels it feels like a different product. Without things being super different, if that makes sense. It just seems like with Triple H at the head of creative, head of talent relations, that he's just crafting a product that seems easier to watch. It's smoother. It's less complicated. It's easier to understand. It seems fresh. Yet it's the same name, a lot of the same TV production strategies and camera angles, although Triple H is adding camera angles that I think little things like that add to the show, but it just feels different. And it feels like promos aren't as rehearsed as maybe they previously were. And one program last night that really blew me away. One, I mean, one that I, that the title is this episode is, is Kevin Owens. Drew McIntyre, really just a program that no one asked for, but now we all want. It's amazing. Two guys that almost kind of parallel each other in some ways. And it if they've crossed paths, I've forgotten about it because it felt like this was the first time they really crossed paths. Now, I don't know if this is something... That is going to continue with both of these men, with Drew McIntyre having a date with Roman Reigns in uh, less than three weeks. You would imagine that Kevin Owens is probably not going to, right away anyway, get involved in the championship picture. However, it was like Kevin Owens was rebirthed on Monday, giving us a a mission statement about what he wants to do that every champion is now in his in his sights and reminding us also what he did at battleground six years ago i mean first of all that that to me is so telling about something vince wouldn't do that he would have allowed even something like that to be said just reminding fans of something that happened six years ago that vince would probably say well fans don't remember that oh we do and i very strikingly remember that match with Sami Zayn being 
marketed as the final chapter. And I think like six months later, they ended up having another match or something. It's always funny when they say the last chapter, the last time, the forever, right? And you know it's not. But I, that match, I do remember being a standout match. Battleground 20, what was it? This is 2016. And in Washington, D.C., it's just it's just weird that he brought that match up for a pay per view that is a B pay per view that isn't even on the uh, rotation anymore of scheduled pay per views. It's just something I noticed, something I, I that was absolutely to me noteworthy about part of that promo. And also, who's the baby face here? Who's the heel, or, or is there none? I mean, I I guess Kevin Owens was trying to play the heel. Although he was doing a very poor job at it, and I mean that kind of in a backhanded way, complimentary way, because he was speaking 100% from the heart, and so was Drew. So was Drew. And it's just, it was difficult to boo Owens in those moments, in that moment, in that entire promo, because it felt real, because it was. Talking about that he's, you know, that old Kevin Owens. It, it, you know, he's back and you know that I I'm going to bring back a part of myself that I should have brought back a long time ago and you know talking about how Drew is the chosen one and all that kind of stuff it, it was just great and Drew getting fired up at Owens I could have watched them cut a promo on one another all night long it was such a great verbal jousting battle that they have to come back to this and the match that ensued afterwards was also really good. Now, the crowd chanted, this is awesome. It was awesome. I think this is awesome chants are generally overused and more a lot of times to just get the crowd attention on themselves rather than actually having the, the primary purpose of giving respect to the actual match going on. But this was deserving of that chant. Uh, for, again, a chant that is overused and oversaturated, in my opinion. Now, it was a bit of a giveaway uh, that you had two guys on the rise. Drew can't lose right now heading into Clash at the Castle. Owens was has just been rebirthed. He's now on a hot streak. If you look at that, you'd say there's no way you're going to get a clean finish here because neither one of them can really afford to lose. So we did get a, a DQ finish. Now, it came with the Usos. The Usos attacked McIntyre. It caused a DQ. And while 95% of the DQ finishes that happen in WWE are simply for lack of courage, lack of confidence in the characters to give anybody a clean victory, and really just a, a lack of just sometimes creativity this one this dq finish actually made sense and and it's unfortunate that you anytime you see a dq finish sometimes our natural reaction is oh, that's a, oh come on really a dq finish that's stupid we wouldn't feel that way if they sparingly use them but since they've overused them even when it's appropriate to use a dq finish we will look at it and go oh that's that's a how can we not have a clean finish but Again, for the reasons I outlined just a couple of minutes ago, it makes sense that you don't have a clean finish here. Plus, not only are both guys on the rise right now, and neither can truly afford to lose, this is a match that you can plan for later. It's a match that you could headline a pay-per-view with, and I would argue this was a pay-per-view quality matchup. It was good. And it's just two pros who have been in WWE, worked outside of WWE. They feel or they both have organic connections with the crowd. And honestly, I've never really thought about a Drew McIntyre Kevin Owens program. It's not even something that I I know I I knew I wanted. I mean, Vince has over the years, not always, he swung and missed a lot, but there were times Vince gave us things that we didn't know we wanted. And it felt like at least for me, this is a program I didn't know I wanted, and now I do. But I think it's going to take a little time to get there because Drew still has to get through Roman. That could take some time. And if he wins or doesn't, you know, I mean, I would argue, I mean, to me, 
the more and more that I look at the product, the closer and closer we get to Clash at the Castle. And the fact that Vince is gone and Triple H has so far been extremely smart and responsive and seemingly ahead of the fans in some cases of what they want with what we saw with Drew and Kevin this week, I think the case is growing stronger and stronger for Roman to drop those those belts, or at least one of them, even though I understand it's supposed to be one. We've gone over this a hundred times, but there is the case at least for Roman to drop one and keep the universal. So I, I think, you know, the more and more that I, if, if someone was to force me to make a decision right now on who I think is going to win in the main event at Clash, I say Drew wins. And that's the first time I've said that in two years, saying that someone else other than Roman's going to win a Roman Reigns championship match. So, and that's that, a big factor in that is Triple H, a big factor. Because I, I think if Vince were still here, I would not be singing that tune. But a great job. And McIntyre took a stunner after the match was, I mean, after the DQ finish, but then still managed to take out both Usos. Good stuff. I mean, it, it didn't make anybody look like crap. It reestablished Owens, gave us a program we didn't know we wanted, continued to put heat on the Usos but made McIntyre look like an absolute badass. It was bing, bang, boom, check the boxes. Great booking here. I have zero complaints about the way this was set up. It it pulled me in. It made me feel something. It made me feel like I was watching something real. It was great. I have nothing bad to say. So, uh, But uh, let's return to uh, the beginning of Raw because Monday Night Raw opened with the Judgment Day. And that was nice. That was nice, right? The Judgment Day opened Monday Night Raw. How about that? It made it feel to me like, okay, they're going to actually give us something to think about or care about with the Judgment Day other than just they're stuck somewhere in the middle of the show and all of us complain that Edge got ousted too quick, which he did, and I'll stand by that 200%. But it also sent the message to fans that this is a group that can be showcased. This is a group that can be taken seriously. And uh, at the beginning of the show, they all came out to brag about their recent accomplishments over the Mysterios. And uh, we had Damian Priest talk about his match with Edge coming up next week on Monday Night Raw in Toronto. So that's going to be fun. Rey Mysterio came and attacked all of them from behind. He ended up sending Balor and Priest out of the ring. And then he had a standoff with Rhea Ripley before he had to focus on Balor and Priest. However, Rhea Ripley ended up being the key to being the, being the one to uh, be Mysterio's downfall here when she blocked the chair shot and then Rhea delivered a DDT to Ray on the chair. And then the Mysterio's, or, or rather just Ray, rather, Dominic was not there. The segment ended when uh, people were just, the officials were checking on Mysterio while the Judgment Day celebrated. So, okay, I have no problem with the way this is booked. I like the Judgment Day being prominently positioned at the beginning of the show. Beginning of the show usually does set the tone for the whole show, and I liked it. No problem here. The biggest problem I have is, and it's becoming a glaring problem, even for those that don't agree with what I'm about to say, it's a glaring issue now. It's in your face, whether you want it to be or not. And that is this just, if you're if you're a woman in WWE and you are involved in some kind of program with the men, uh, whether it's just a, in a one-off match, if you're a manager and, you know, whatever, you're interfering on, on, uh, on behalf of your man that you're managing, whatever, it doesn't matter. You somehow have this just invisible cloak. You have this cloak of invincibility is what you have because you're a woman and I'm sick of it. I I, I don't, you know, I'm not going to sit here and deal with anybody who thinks I'm advocating for in this world of just everybody taking everything out of context 
uh, I'm, that's not obviously what I'm saying is I'm not advocating for that. But in a pro wrestling sense, it's getting preposterous that just because Rhea's a woman, that Ray can't defend himself. What exactly, outside of the social stigma against it, what law, if you're going to take this into the real world, I'm sorry, what law exactly prevents you from, or, or, or rather hinders you or whatever, from defending yourself from somebody just because they're a woman? What, is there something out there I'm missing? So it's clearly not anything codified in law outside of WWE that they're trying to duplicate. What they've done is be sensitive to to society, right? They've been they're sensitive to what's going on today in the culture today. And they're concerned that if they allow it even in a fantasy environment that it would be a PR nightmare that WWE is promoting domestic violence or something. I mean that's the kind of culture we're in now. It's it's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. But I think that's the hindrance and that's the way they look at it. Even in an environment where this is all, you know, pre pre staged and or pre planned and you know, obviously they're not truly trying to hurt each other. It's just a, a performance. And it is, if you want to look at it that superficially. But I'm done with it. My point is I'm over it. <laughs> it's getting stupid. And I know that no one else seems to be making this point, but it makes the men, it actually makes them look stupid and weak. And you may say, well, stupid and weak? What do you mean stupid and weak? They're, that's a woman. Okay, well, what exactly gives her the right to put her hands on a man? Just because she's a woman? F that, right? If you're in my way, chair shot, right? Is Ray just going to go, oh, okay, well, yeah, no problem. I'm not going to defend myself. You can DDT my skull into a steel chair and risk paralysis, but I'm not going to defend myself because you're a woman. Yeah, I don't think so. Like, you know, it's just, it's common sense. To, it's, it's a lack of common sense right now. And there's just, I think it's so, so ridiculous. And it, it, it makes the baby faces look like fools. Rhea just stands in the ring and she's got this, you know, it's like she got the star in Super Mario Brothers and no one can touch her. You know, oh, I'm a woman. Sorry. Can't, you know, that can't do it. You, you can't touch me. I can do anything I want to you and you can't defend yourself because I'm a woman. Screw that. I don't think so. Right. Again, I'm not <laughs> somebody out there, some some feminist or something's going to listen to this and say, well, what a chauvinistic. You know. No, remember. This is the sandbox. We're playing in a fantasy world, okay? So anybody that wants to come at me, I, I really would I, I would really like to engage with somebody that thinks I'm actually advocating for, for domestic violence. Come on. It's just I want a realistic product, and when you give me one that has a glaring problem, and it's clearly because it's a societal problem bleeding into WWE, uh, that, that's where I draw the line. So... Anyway, before I dive too deep here, let's continue on. I'm sure some of you are already uh, really enthralled with what I've had to say so far, but uh, I have zero apologies for that. I will 1 million percent, percent stand by it. I've been complaining about it for weeks that Rhea Ripley gets a pass and she just gets this just just get out of jail free card because she's a woman and huh, I can slam your skull into a door, into a, you know, whatever. And yeah, you can't do anything to me. Bullsh. Yeah. Anyway. I almost cursed. Let's keep going. Um, so let's. what else happened on Monday Night Raw? We got the Women's Tag Team title tournament continuing. And this time it was Nikki A.S.H. and Dewdrop who took on Asuka and Alexa Bliss. As expected, Alexa Bliss and Asuka win. But it was a good match. And... I don't think that there was really anything to complain about here. It was a it was a decent match. It made sense that Alexa and Asuka won to advance in the tournament. And as expected, next week, they take on one another in the semifinals of the tag team title tournament. Winner of that match goes to the tag team title match. Uh, to, oh, rather, EO Sky and Dakota Kai, that is, take on Asuka and Alexa Bliss next week. 
winner of that match, as I said, goes on to the finals that I would imagine take place uh, probably in Cardiff, Wales at Clash, but I don't know if that's confirmed yet. So let's see here. Um, Let's continue on. Oh, we got The Miz and Champa versus uh, Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander. This was, you know, I I don't know what to say about this. I mean, The Miz and Champa right now should win. They did win. Uh, it was a really good match. Okay, I'll say that. What do you think you're going to get with these guys, especially Champa, Ali, and Alexander? My God. Uh, some of the notes from this that uh, that I have here, Champa was able to hit the, uh, or Ali was trying to hit a 450 splash, but it allowed the black heart to hit the fairy tale ending for the pin and the win. So we did get Champa have the, uh, getting the victory, and he should right now as the new guy, at least the new guy on the quote unquote main roster, he should be the one getting the victories. You want him to get the spotlight. You want him to be imprinted in the minds of fans as a worker, as a winner. At, you know, just get him established. And I, honestly, I think he arrived last week with Bobby Lashley in the U.S. title match. But the Miz and Champa win, and Ali and Alexander lose. But you know, hey, this was a uh, this was fine. And, and Miz and Champa winning, I think, was the right right decision. Okay, Drew McIntyre versus Kevin Owens. I we already went over that. That happened third, but Veer versus oh boy, I can't even pronounce his name. Something Keller, Bow Keller. I'm pretty sure it's not pronounced Bjox. <laughs> Probably Boo or Bow Keller. I forget what the pronunciation was. So Veer Mahan, the Veer Mahan watch is back up and running, and uh, Veer Mahan wins. <sighs> I mean. I, I don't know. It's this was okay. Uh Fear Mahan getting a squash match again, local talent. I don't know what they know what they're doing. Still, I don't know if they know what their long term plan is for Veer other than just keep putting him in squash matches. You know, I I, I don't know. I, I really don't know what sh- what to say about this. He does need a bit of a character deepening though, for Veer that is. Veer Mahan needs some kind of deeper character development than what they're giving him right now. So, all right, let's take a quick break for the sponsor of the show. When we come back, we're going to talk more about Monday Night Raw, and you're not going to want to miss it. So stay right here. We'll be right back. All right, so the truth is no dude wants to be called Pam, but the truth is most men have a Pam problem. The Pam problem, guys, you know what that is? It's the passive aggressive man. Passive with his hopes, dreams, desires, maybe aggressive with vices, self-sabotage, distractions. They also struggle with women, work, and the world of men. Pam is passive with women, constantly friend-zoned. He's the nice guy that women keep around to help them move, check on their dogs, but never want to date. Pam is passed up at work, passed up for the promotion, and can't seem to catch a break. If you think you may have a Pam problem, or maybe you know someone that does, check out the High Value Man Conversation on Apple and Spotify and learn how to stop Pam and become a high value man. Learn more about the host, Aaron Alejandrino, on Instagram at TheFitBeard, all one word, but the podcast is called High Value Man Conversation. I checked it out on Apple Podcasts. It already has a five-star review It's got some great episodes, including how to avoid that dreaded friend zone. Those of you guys out there, I'm very familiar with that friend zone over the years. I was lucky enough to finally get out of it, but that is going to be an excellent episode for you you guys out there that are stuck in that situation. You can also learn how to just make friends. I mean, just basic stuff, but critical, critical stuff as well. Check out the High Value Man Conversation. It's available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You're not going to want to miss it. It'll add value to your life, guaranteed. Check it out today. Welcome back to the WWE Podcast. Let's get back to more great wrestling audio. (laughs) 
So as we continue on here, we've got Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles. Man, oh man, another, again, a really good match. Overall, this show was just back to basics. I almost titled the show Back to Basics with uh, just easy to understand storylines, good wrestling. And did I even mention that in the promo with Kevin and Drew that they said wrestler? That's a change of pace, huh? That's nice to hear. They they just separated sports entertainer and wrestler. Thank you. That's what you do. That's how you entertain is through wrestling. Like sports entertainment. Some the, I'm not even going to get into it. You guys have heard me rant about it, but sports entertainment just doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Okay. So this match, AJ Styles and Bobby Lashley for the U.S. title, I think was really helped by the videos that hyped it ahead of time and reminded you, continue to remind you it wasn't just a flash in the pan for those videos, and hopefully they'll continue to also do the, to do the same for the Intercontinental over on SmackDown. Oh, and before I forget, I know I keep coming back to Drew and Kevin, but there's so much to dissect there. I love how the announcers made the excuse that Drew was there from SmackDown because he could potentially, there's that ultra key word, potentially capture the uh, unified championship and then he'd be able to come to Raw. Well, uh, uh, yeah, okay, he could. But until then, why is he here? As a contender, how exactly does that give you the right to be here? Now, I know the man, that the brand split is effectively dead. We've gone over that a hundred times. But if you're going to try to go back to the narrative that Raw and SmackDown should stay separate and when a Raw star or a SmackDown star comes to Raw, that they shouldn't be here and make it lame excuses of why they're there. And, and this week was, well, it's because Drew could potentially. Y- yeah. Okay. And like you either are or you aren't like contenders don't get that pass. It's it's preposterous. I don't know. I hope that when Triple H, if there's a draft this year, just manages this a little differently. And, and I know why they didn't do it because they felt or they felt probably like they needed a larger star on the show. And I'm not complaining because we got an awesome segment with KO, but all right, let's move on. The Lashley AJ Styles match, as I said, for the U.S. title was really good. And we actually got a finish here. I was I was a bit concerned they were going to give us a little bit of a DQ finish like they did uh, with Kevin Owens and Drew. But they didn't. It You know, this uh, this was still really good. And you know what? I think that, again, it showed AJ Styles still could be a main eventer if they wanted him to be. He could still be a champion if they wanted him to be. No problem there. Uh, you know, and I think Lashley is doing a, you know, a, a Bobby Lashley job with the belt, meaning he doesn't talk much. He does his talking in the ring. He looks like a $10 million. So no problem. The, the little bit of a hiccup here was Dexter Loomis in the crowd being tackled, ca- tackled by security when he jumped the barricade. And they brought him out of the ring. Now, the announcers did did uh, acknowledge who it was that was dragged out, which was different from last week. And it seems like he is targeting AJ Styles. So that's that seems to be what the evidence is pointing to. So AJ versus Dexter is probably what's coming. And they the way that Dexter Loomis is being introduced is is kind of fun because we all know that he got let go, right? Comes back. That last week on Raw, the 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 camera doesn't even pan to him as if it was a fan, and this week they did the same thing where they they had the presentation that the the way that it played out was Dexter's going to jump the barricade. He probably told security, "Pretend he's a fan. Treat him like how you would treat a fan that jumped the barricade," and they did. I mean, outside of the cameras making a little bit more of a a gander over that direction, which they have to. But other than that, security generally and genuinely look like it was a fan. It, you know, if the announcers didn't acknowledge it, you would look at that and go, hmm, that actually could be a fan. I like that. It's 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 a nice touch. So, again, no complaints with this matchup, though. Lashley wins as he should. 
There's no reason for us to believe that AJ Styles could win the U.S. title. It just doesn't make sense. So, all right, uh, all right. So before we go any further. I want to let you guys know how to f- get in touch with the show or rather how to go ad free patreon.com $1 a month patreon.com slash WWE podcast is where you go. And also Apple podcasts. We have a 99 cent a month Apple podcast feed that is a hundred percent ad free or not. It's $10 for the entire year, which means you get two months free for Apple podcasts. So check that out. I think it's worth your time. I'm also going to be doing, and I've said this last week, but uh, they're continuing to increase, which makes me want to do them more. And it's actually not going to change in any way anything uh, in terms of how I do the show, which is going to kind of perpetuate more negative review- reviews. And I've got some good positive ones, but the the, the negative reviews uh, are, are just coming pretty pretty heavily lately. I don't know if people are just uh, not happy with their lives uh, and uh, whatever the case may be. Let me actually uh, just quickly. And I know some of you are just, you don't need to acknowledge me. I do because it's more fun. It's fun that way. It really is. So let's, uh, let's just take a look at one. So here we go. Let, let me, let me talk about this one. Ads are unbearable. That's the title of it. They gave me two out of five stars. So, so it could be worse. And, uh, this person said, I really wanted to like this podcast yelling it. Of course they release a lot of episodes, but the ads make about up, uh, make up about 75% of the shows. They sometimes just run twice in a row, which just makes you feel like you're listening to serious radio. I understand you're promoting your paid service, which is really cheap, but I don't like to immediately pay for service. I'm not sure that I like it first. We'll probably listen occasionally around the big stuff, but such a shame because the main host is really good. All right. Actually, that's a little more positive than I thought. Well, Hey, look, let me just respond to that first. And um, I understand ads are a pain in the neck, you know, but here's the thing. You're also getting the content for free. Do you not watch YouTube with ads? Hulu has ads. If you don't pay for the extra, if you don't pay extra and, and any streaming service, any, you have to pay extra to get the ads removed. How is my content any different? You could listen without paying a penny. So I'm still giving you everything for free. If the biggest hang up in your life is that you have to hit the skip button or sigh a couple of times, like, oh my God, more ads, then I don't know what to tell you because you're still getting this for free if you really want to. So this, this business model that I have here is uh, you know, not exactly new to the industry. Every major streaming service has it. Thousands and thousands of podcasts have this. And I just don't know what to tell people that don't like the ads. I understand it. I say I understand it because I also listen to podcasts that have ads, but I trudge through them. I'm like, look, PW Torch, I'm a big fan. I like their work. I like Wade Keller. I like his team. They're actually the ones that inspire me to do this. I get it. And do I look at his podcast and go, oh my God, if you think my ad, my podcast has ads, Go listen to Wade Keller's show. I mean, like, do it because he's a good host and he genuinely has good content. He's a smart guy and he's been in the business since like the eighties. But if you think my show has ads, go go listen to Wade Keller's show. It has like twice as many, at least. Okay, but I understand why he does it. The guy needs to make a living. That's how he makes his living. So, I'm not trying to you know make a huge deal out of this, but uh, you know I understand the ad problem, but it's not going anywhere. Okay. That's why would you not monetize your efforts? It's how you monetize your work. Okay. So, all right. Well, anyway, I've got much more that are much worse. Okay. Like I'm not going to read you the, the, the content cause I'm going to move on, but the title of the next one would be can't even deal with it anymore. Have to unfollow, <laughs> uh, racist podcast. That's a fun one. What's the point? I'm reading you titles dated stop complaining or don't watch consistently rates somewhere between. Oh gosh. I can't even read the rest of this. It won't let me Um, please stop complaining. Part two. It's tolerable. Annoying for this reason. (laughs) So those are just some of the beautiful glowing five-star reviews that we have over on Apple podcasts. Uh, You guys can go read them for yourself. They're public to view, but I will be responding to some of them. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun time. I'll, I'm going to think about doing video or something. Uh, yeah, 
it'd be more fun. Also, as you guys like ads, uh, <laughs> but I really would appreciate if you do the DuPont Network. Yes, I have a show on DuPontNow.com every Saturday at 8. That's a one-hour video show. But I'm now doing a streaming on-demand service there. And meaning if you can't watch it at 8 o'clock Saturday, there is a on-demand section of the DuPont Network at DuPontNow.com. D-U-P-O-N-T. And what that means is you can just watch anytime. If you want to see an episode of us doing our show on Apple or on Apple Podcasts, on the DuPont Network on Saturday, but you don't have time, you can go on demand. And it's uh, I think it's I think it's thirty dollars, but it's the entire season of our show. Or you can purchase uh, uh, episode by episode, but on demand, it's there if you want it. So just uh, check it out. I'd encourage you if you want to see it, but you're like, oh, I don't have time exactly at eight o'clock. Check out our on demand at All right. So let's continue on with Raw. And we've got Dana Brooke versus Dakota Kai. Now, I know there's other segments I didn't get to. I didn't talk about Ziggler in theory yet. We'll get there. But Dakota Kai, or yes, and uh, Dana Brooke, they had a singles match. They had a brief backstage confrontation earlier in the night. They had a semi-competitive exchange. Dakota Kai got the victory. But uh, she somehow didn't win the 24-7 title for some reason. I, I don't know exactly how that happened because she's the champion. But I guess maybe for this match that was suspended. I don't know. But either way, maybe they're finally just going to do away with the 24-7 title. Because you talk about a shelf life that has... I mean, it, it has lived like nine lives. And there's no reason for it to be alive anymore. I mean, the 24-7 title can... Uh, it, it, it needs to just get buried six feet deep. I mean, there's no other way around it. The, the, the 24-7 title is, it's not entertainment anymore. Those that think it's some kind of comedy relief segment have been wrong for like the last three years about it. You know, it, it was like comedy relief when our truth had it for, for like the first six months. And then we're like, okay, cool. That was a fun little novelty thing. But, you know, I think it's on its course. And they kept it around and kept it around and kept it around and kept it around. And then they kept it around some more. So, yeah, we're done with it. Okay. The, okay, we got Theory and Dolph Ziggler. I'm glad they came back to this. And it's interesting that they closed Raw. I think it's a... Their good old statement to fans that Theory is a main eventer. And that Triple H views him as a main eventer. That he seemingly agrees with Vince McMahon's vision for Theory. And he beat Ziggler clean. That's not a shock, nor should anyone be surprised. But the, the the position of this match, to me, is the most important part. The position of this match up being the main event of Raw is really what the message was to me. And it was, it was a message that said, hey, Theory is going to be big. He's still Mr. Money in the Bank. I love the promo he cut before. Running down Dolph Ziggler saying he screwed up his career. Ziggler saying that I cashed in. I won the world heavyweight championship. And then again, theory coming back and talking about how his whole career was just screwed up after that, which just has a lot of a lot of truth to it. What's to me with the commentary team. Somebody said it. It might, might have been good old Jack Wagon, uh, Byron Saxon. I'm not a fan of him. I'm still not a fan of Byron Saxon. But. He, I think he said that after Theory kicked out of the the uh, zigzag, he they said it might have been Jim, it might have been Jimmy Smith. One of them said, "And how many superstars has Dolph Ziggler beaten with the zigzag?" As if kicking out of the zigzag was some kind of heroic feat, and that we we all are looking at the zigzag as some kind of definitive ending, like a tombstone. Or a pedigree, for that matter. Kind of those money finishers. The zigzag has to be, statistically, one of the most kicked out finishes of all time. How could you even say that with a straight face? <laughs> the zigzag is preposterous as a finish. The reason it's preposterous is not because it doesn't look pretty. Ziggler makes it look pretty. Even though the opponent, all they do is take a flat back bump. 
I mean, like that's all they do. But Ziggler makes it look pretty, and credit to him. But if we're supposed to believe that the zigzag is suddenly this money finish, it's not going to happen. And it, again, it could be, but they've educated us for like the last 10 years that it's it's kind of, it's like his signature move. You know, it's not his finish. It's like that. And I just have a problem with that. It, I, I just, I, it's anger and it's also just like shaking my head like, Byron, please stop the pain. But the match was good. I mean... How can I come on here and say Theory versus Ziggler is a bad quality matchup? It's not. So, really, um, it was fine here. Now, Ziggler, I guess, kind of explained, but didn't outright say why he's been attacking Theory. He just said that, you know, he kind of just thinks he's some cocky SOB, I guess. Right? That he didn't earn it, earn the position he's in or whatever. I guess that's what it is. But... I don't know. So let's see what else happened here. I'm looking at some of the notes. Um, I think that did that pretty much do it. Did I dare say that that pretty much did it? Nikki Cross, she's got at least from what I've seen. I think she's about to go undergo a, tr- a character transformation. I think that Nikki Cross is as stale as eight month old bread. I mean, it's just moldy at this point. Like, no one cares about uh, uh, Alexa Bliss, I think, or rather, uh, Nikki Cross. I think that she's about to undergo some kind of transformation, and I hope she does, because I think Nikki has value, just not as this hokey, awful superhero character that you knew was doomed from the start. So, yeah, that pretty much does it for the Monday Night Raw. I mean, if I was to give it a rating out of 10... I'd give it like a 7.5 out of 10, maybe an 8. It was good. It was a good, solid show. It gave us wrestling. Again, as I said at the beginning, back to basics, furthered storylines, gave us a fresh matchup we didn't know we wanted and one that likely is going to continue into the future at some point. Gave us hope that that, uh, Drew is actually going to beat Roman. And don't forget, Drew is doing something smart. He is echoing the complaints of fans, the, the the mass complaints that fans are having that Roman Reigns isn't here. We're tired of him as champion. He's an absentee champion. Drew is being the voice of the fans. That's obviously a smart move when you're trying to get, you know, you're, you're trying to get the support of the audience. You know, he needs to continue to beat that drum. That Roman is an absentee champion. You guys deserve a champion that's here every Friday night. Every Monday night, every live event, that and he needs to continue to hammer that home because that'll continue to get fans behind him. Because fans are tired of the Roman Reigns part time, sometime, never time schedule. And I, I'm a, I agree. It's an, enough is enough. It's time for a change. Anybody else notice that too in Kevin Owens? Kevin Owens promo. Uh, uh, I guess I'd give uh, points. Not that they really matter. But I give points to anybody that could <clears throat> name me where that's from, at least in the 90s. Who used to say that? Enough is enough, and it's time for a change. All right. Well, I'm going to give you the answer, and that is Owen Hart. And actually, more famously to me, it was the impersonator, and I can't remember his name. They brought him on to impersonate a bunch of wrestlers. He actually ended up getting beat up in the storyline and he impersonated, I think the rock, he impersonated Owen Hart most famously. And he came out as Owen Hart and said that, you know, I'm a nugget. And he's, you know, um, it just, he, who, Jason sensation. Am I, am I right on that? Jason sensation back in the late nineties came on and did some hilarious impressions of the wrestlers and he got beat up for it, but it was really funny. So, but Kevin Owens this week incorporated that into his his uh, promo. I don't know if that was on purpose as like kind of a wink to Owen Hart or not. I'm going to tend towards yes. It's kind of an interesting little line. Kevin Owens knocked it out of the park this week, you know, and so did Drew. It was just a solid show all around with some kind of crappy fillers in between, but generally good. So 
that is it for the Monday Night Raw review. Again, guys, go support me. Give me that good old shiny five star rating and review, that glowing review that you, you know, duplicate some of those that you saw on Apple Podcasts and uh, uh, give us a uh, subscribe on YouTube. We do have a YouTube channel. We also have TikTok at the WWE Podcast and, of course, patreon.com slash WWE Podcast for a dollar. You get in the door for all of our episodes ad free. Everybody, thank you so much. Tomorrow, I'm back with the mailbag. Hopefully tomorrow. Tomorrow's tomorrow's a tough day, man. I really try, but sometimes it comes out a day late because of my video recording I do for the uh, my Saturday night show on the DuPont Now Network. So I'm going to aim for tomorrow for the mailbag. I, will, I can at least promise you I'll try. Okay, so thank you, everybody, for listening. Take care. I'll talk to you next time. All right, so the truth is no dude wants to be called Pam. But the truth is, most men have a Pam problem. The Pam problem, guys, you know what that is? It's the passive aggressive man. Passive with his hopes, dreams, desires, maybe aggressive with vices, self sabotage, distractions. They also struggle with women, work, and the world of men. Pam is passive with women, constantly friend zoned. He's the nice guy that women keep around to help them move, check on their dogs, but never want to date. Pam is passed up at work, passed up for the promotion, and can't seem to catch a break. If you think you may have a Pam problem, or maybe you know someone that does, check out the High Value Man Conversation on Apple and Spotify and learn how to stop Pam and become a high value man. Learn more about the host, Aaron Alejandrino, on Instagram at TheFitBeard, all one word, but the podcast is called high value man conversation i checked it out on apple podcasts it already has a five star review it's got some great episodes including how to avoid that dreaded friend zone those of you guys out there i'm very familiar with that friend zone over the years i was lucky enough to finally get out of it but that is going to be an excellent episode for the you guys out there that are stuck in that situation you can also learn how to just make friends I mean, just basic stuff, but critical, critical stuff as well. Check out the High Value Man conversation. It's available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You're not going to want to miss it. It'll add value to your life, guaranteed. Check it out today. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.